Ain't no has stepping with Marcus J. Thank y'all, everybody, for staying with us at this late hour to be down with us. Call us at 804-402-2893 to be down with the flagship show right here on Legacy Internet Radio. Bless, when you listen to our show when you're not here, the stuff that we sometimes talk about make you kind of go, really? I mean, I love listening to y'all. I just I love the flow. I love the camaraderie. I love all of it. It's just so nice. You even love Colin Banks though. <laughs> Sometimes. Well, he's got gummy bears. To, he's got gummy bears today, so I love him. She been cut off. <laughs> she just got cut off. <laughs> he's got gummy bears. Damn it. Nah, buddy, you you just blown that. <laughs> See, as nice as I am to you, and then you just go you ahead. Are. I love mm-hmm. you, Carl. Mm-hmm. No. <laughs> the things we say for gummy bears. <laughs> 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 gummy bears. Oh my goodness! I tell you, this dude right here, boy, he sure know he got away with the ladies, don't he? <laughs> sure. He bring some gummy bears. Oh and I man, know he got he got some gummy bears, boy. We got to be nice to call bags. All right, Ado has to have a Marcus J. Right, reason why I asked you that question, bless, is because when we do some stuff on this show. I, you know, I I like finding just weird shit to talk about like stuff that really really kind of trips you out and most of these i find some of them people send to me this was one somebody sent to me i'm getting this one from cbs 6 our local wtv our local cbs station here in richmond virginia this is about a north carolina student in fayetteville who's graduating from high school and promptly stripped to his underwear oh. while walking across the stage last week. Now, the superintendent, Frank Till Jr., told the Fayetteville Observer last week that this kid's not going to get a diploma. According to the paper, Quentin Murphy was walking across the stage when he turned towards the audience, pulled his robe over his head, and posed with his arms out in the air. He was only wearing leopard print briefs, socks, and shoes when he took off the robe. Obviously... Nobody was amused by it. Quote, it used to be that the audience would be disruptive at graduation. This is what Till said. We work hard to get the audiences to respect our students. This young man chose not to show respect for his colleagues. The Till uh, recommended to Principal Denise Garrison the school withhold Murphy's diploma and bar him from school's property and events such as football games. He graduated. Yeah, or he's, he doesn't want to It's at back, that stage. Bro. Why would he care about that? But. Uh, anyway, I wanted to talk about this. Bless, I'll get you in on this one first. Do you think that the right thing happened? Did he deserve to have his diploma not given to him and he be banned from the campus? From what I understand, which is not alluded in this article, but I did research and find another article that says that all his transcripts and everything will be in order. He just will not have a diploma. So everything else is legit. He'll be able to go to college and they'll be able to confirm what his grades were in high school, all that kind of stuff. He just ain't going to have that diploma that everybody else gets. What's your thoughts on this? I mean, okay, that piece of paper, I mean, that's something that my mama has at her house. I don't even have my diploma anymore. So that's more of sentimental value for her. But, you know, if you can get your transcripts, that's... That's, you can go back and pay for what he because he's barred from school, so I guess he can't go back and get his transcripts. But um, he can order them anyway. Just 18, 18, 14 years, 15, 14, 13, somewhere in there. Some those many years of school learning, and you have no common sense not to do something like that. I mean, it just all went down the drain. Like, and he had to have had some sense that this is I probably shouldn't do this. But did his mama not see him go out the house? Okay. He ruined, like you said, 14, 15 years in 30 seconds. Exactly. Okay. Come on, y'all. Be serious. Every year, somebody graduates, and it's the last day. Remember the adrenaline. It was the last day. You're going to walk across the stage. People are going to just shout your name, you know, make noise, woo-hoo-hoo, and, and everything for you. You do something. You do something when you walk across the stage. Now, I'm not saying taking off your clothes was a plus, but the boy had on his shoes. <laughs> okay. But I mean, there are children in the crowd. They're, I mean, you coming out there with your grandparents because they're proud of their their grandson as their grandson or granddaughter is graduating, and there's their food walking Somebody across. Knew. I can't believe Somebody I don't brought knew. them. That he was going to do something. Everybody, I mean, I'm not saying every child does it, but 
every child feels excitement. There is one that does something. I did a little dance, but I kept my robe Okay, on. so you danced. The twerking. He was, took, there was no twerking there was back no twerking. then. Yeah, I like there that. was. <laughs> just didn't call it twerking. Michelle, Michelle K is saying that he was so stupid. And when I see something like this, it reminds me, that's why, if I'm kind of to follow where you're going mm-hmm. with that, mm-hmm. like we talked last week about the woman who graduated and she promptly started breastfeeding her child. And, you know, you can have your opinions about her doing that all you want, but the truth of the matter is it was premeditated because somebody pulled a camera out, took a picture of it immediately. So, Carl Banks, let me get you in on this one now. You got this young guy who obviously knew that he was going to pull this senior prank we got pranks here in richmond is getting kids damn near arrested but this one here he basically stripped down to his ugly ass leopard print drawers which i got an issue with that dudes ain't supposed to wear leopard print drawers he wearing ever. Go ahead, boy. Gay, gay or straight he wearing your throat all, all our gay brothers and sisters who are listening y'all too no leopard print drawers he but call call, call banks what's your thoughts on it he ruined his mommy and his dad's their uh, moments, their moment. Yeah, their, their moment. That's their moment. That ain't your moment. That's their moment. It and I'm gonna moments. tell you right now, if my son came home, he he, he gonna have to get another address. He gonna have to go live somewhere else because he can't come to my house. Number one, he can't go to my parents' house. Number two, he can't go to my brother's house. Number three. So I don't know where he gonna go, but I'm gonna send his mail there because I, I know that set of that core group right there would be. At graduation, for that to have happened. <laughs> but it's just, next thing is he had to get off the stage, right? You're gonna be waiting at the bottom I'm of the be steps. At the bottom of the step <laughs> probably, he probably, the balcony. Hey, hey, look, you probably need to stay on that stage. <laughs> yeah, he may need to stay on the stage because I'm gonna be in the balcony first of all, all right? But by the time he gets to that bottom step, he gonna have to run back up that step. <laughs> you would have, you would have leaped over by then. Man, I'm telling you right now, out of pole vault or something down there. Yeah, I, I mean, I, but that's something that when I came up, you are a reflection of your parents. That's in mm-hmm. my mm-hmm. oh my gosh. Yeah, I don't think taking his clothes off was you know the thing to do. I really don't think holding the diploma, holding the diploma from him. You know, makes much sense. It doesn't. He should have to do some sort of community service. I mean, or if you so wanna... so so let, let's simplify this. We don't have to have a long discussion. Now let's let's because because you're the only one that thinks that there's nothing wrong with that. So let me just kind of question you mm-hmm. on this one. Mm-hmm. What should, if anything, happen to this young man? I don't know. I would have to think about that. Well, let's think but about what, it now. Let's let's what let's, is, what let's is, what is going to happen, or what are you proving by not giving him the piece of paper? What are you proving by not showing some sort of discipline by someone who did something you know so blatant? Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, somebody. hold up. Something so blatantly offensive to mm-hmm. every single person in the mm-hmm. room to take off your clothes mm-hmm. and flash everybody mm-hmm. in a moment that's supposed to be dignified mm-hmm. and full of respect. You've probably got visitors there. You've probably got a speaker who you spent money to have there. You've got the grandparents and their parents and the siblings mm-hmm. and the family of every other graduate. Mm-hmm. And you are the one who makes the buffoon ass again, out of yourself and strip naked it, you know not naked in the sense that you right, have no clothes on but right. but but naked nonetheless right. and so do you feel like this kid should walk away with no consequence listen it is the end of the year it is over it is over if you want dismiss him from the stadium dismiss him from the auditorium i mean really it's over it's the last there has year. to be there Taser. has to be some there has to be some sort of deterrent to keep jackasses in the future from doing this. Exactly. So if there's a junior sitting there, they're gonna see that this senior is not getting his diploma. Okay, you give him his transcripts, he did the work, okay, cool. But you are not gonna walk out of here with no kind of negative consequence, so, embarrassing the school and the principal and the administration and the teachers and your parents and your family and every single person who came there, you're gonna take your clothes you off and shake your him? ass. Hell no. Once you escort him out and you have your your students for the next year and your students that are still sitting there, you make sure you make it clear. It will not be tolerated. But the the, the But boy he gets has away with grand, it. The boy has graduated. You're telling me I can still get my transcripts. You're not stopping me from doing anything. You just didn't give me the freaking piece but of But that's paper. the point. But that's the point. Because you have done the work. And there needs to be some sort of deterrent. There's some kind of punishment, and that punishment is you ain't getting this paper. You don't and you're going to remember this for the rest of your life. You're 18 paper. years old, 58, 50 years from now when you're 60. Because I'll be honest with you, I, I respect that you make that face. 
But I can tell you, for me, I graduated high school 22 years ago, and I know exactly where my high school diploma is because I have it in my house. Mm -hmm. And every once in a while, I look at it, and I smile, and I think about my classmates at St. Anthony High School mm -hmm. in Jersey City, New Jersey, class of 1992, and I look at the diploma, and I have fond memories of that. Mm -hmm. This kid's not going to have that because he was a jackass. I still and I have think. Fun. Say again, I have mine too. Right. And so you don't think that taking that away from him is a fair punishment for him embarrassing every single person that was in that room? All right. Marcus, do you think the boy's embarrassed? He would no. be probably then he wouldn't have, if he you. was embarrassed, he wouldn't have Yeah, but there are a lot but there are so a lot of there are a matter. lot of people who do embarrassing things who don't think about the consequences and when they're presented with consequences, then they think about how dumb what they did was. That's what prison is about. In, he's not embarrassed. He no, did I'm it. saying he had, he had no sort of filter. He had nothing to no. evidently he has no problem with doing this. No, type of he behavior. doesn't. So you're not hurting him. You know who you hurt? The person or the parent who wanted to read the piece of paper, who wanted to hold it in their hand. And they are sitting there, you dummy, you shouldn't have done it. And, and you know what he's doing? He's laughing because it was funny, Ma. It was funny, Dad. It's no, not funny. that don't work. It's not funny. It's not funny to you. It's not funny to her. It, I mean, it's only it's funny up, to it's you. Fun no, no, no. No, no, no. Not Let's you as in you as well. I mean, you as in the asshole who did it. Right. Because I don't condone him taking off his clothes. Do something. I don't care what you do. You could do something. I, I asked my daughter when she graduated, what you going to do when you yeah. walk across the stage? Yeah. I, I, I. I, I'm surprised. I'm surprised it. at your position on this one. I, and I and I can't in any way go there with you. I don't know that any if if, it, if anybody's listening that they want to support S Y on this one, please call us <laughs> okay, at eight zero four four zero two two eight nine three. Be clear. I'm not saying it was okay for him to strip. I am saying, what did you do by not giving him the paper? Kids do stuff. The so, do you think he should have had some other sort it's, of? It's the end of the so year. What would you it's suggest, over. So, what would you suggest would be the punishment, if any, for him doing like this? I, said, I don't know. You know, right away the first. But if you don't know, you got to give me something. If you telling me what they did was not, if you saying the what they did was not cool, then you got to give me something to replace it. Like with. I said. Just pull him out of the graduation. It's over. You called his name. Well, pulling him out, it, you're right. It is over. You called his name. He got up there and was like, pan out. Okay? You saw it. His homeboys was back there laughing. Everybody did not just be like, <gasps> you know, mouth open wide. It's, it's the like, younger people were cool with it. The know, older the people that have sat there and went through Me, school themselves gonna, and are glad right that their now, child made it through If the child are upset. did it at my daughter's graduation... First, I would have been like, oh, my God. And I would have cracked up. I would have cracked up. I got to believe that you're in a minority in that position. Ain't no hashtag with I'll Marcus J. Here. Mr. LP is listening to us. Uh, you can hear him, Stephen Sykes, on in live and radio every Tuesday from 7 to 9. He said that he should not have been allowed to graduate and spend another year at the school or summer school. 500 hours of community service if not arrested there are laws against public nuisance uh i don't know where the 500 hours came from that just seems like that was kind of pulled out of the air but yeah you know, summer school he, wouldn't have mattered and he spent, either and he's he summer school and spent another year when it's graduation you know, so fine. Call I'm, the cops. I'm, not, I'm not sure that, I, that. I, I, I follow that but my the point i'm making is mm -hmm. why i guess mm -hmm. where you and i are having the disconnect mm -hmm. is there has to be well, let me back up. Let me back up. Let me just ask you this question. Do you okay. think that that behavior is appropriate? No, I don't. Okay. So if that behavior is not appropriate, then do you agree that there needs to be some sort of deterrent for that behavior? And yes, again. Okay. So if you believe that there should be some sort of deterrent for that behavior and you know that this kid has graduated or technically mm -hmm. has matric matriculated mm -hmm. out of the school, mm -hmm. then what other way can you punish them other than not giving them you a know, diploma? You know, I'll agree. I'll agree with what Stephen put in there. You could have called the police and you could have let the police handle him, fine him or whatever it is. And then he's it, got a record. But but Listen. if you but even if you did that, let's let's you know uh, the way the article reads. Once he did his quick flashing, he's off the stage, and that's it. So calling the police does yeah, it what? Takes, you have it takes you have five decent seconds. Exposure. Oh, he okay. Yeah, yeah, you, you, got on that. you got him on that. Okay, he's got cool. A record, and therefore, you know that and, that's the punishment right there. And now, tell me what what next child will do it? None. Problem but you have, to, you have to publicize but, that, I mean, again, that punishment. You, you, That's fine. I mean, but, okay, and you can do that. We're but splitting it's the hairs. Of... We're splitting hairs here. Because no, we're not. We are. Because you're agreeing. 
that right, the behavior you're, you're agreeing that the behavior is, is inappropriate. Right. You asked me. If so you don't like the penalized. punishment. You think it should be a different punishment. I think the the so called punishment of taking away his diploma. I don't think that's a real punishment. Again, the only the only person you hurt were the parents or the grandparents who wanted to take that piece of paper. Like I told my daughter, hurry up, get it out the envelope. I wanted to see it. I wanted to see her name. So I you don't think that the it. shame of his parents is enough punishment for him? If that he his thought that that still... would be enough, he wouldn't have got up there and did it. It's, it's not. It's, yeah. it's not. He would not have done it if he thought that he would shame his parents. He would not have done it. <laughs> okay, all right. What's uh, the next? What the uh, hell? Like Let's said, go. I, I killed him with my kid. He, like I said, he can't. Don't come down the steps. You can stay uh, up uh, on the stage. Uh, uh, and again, I don't condone him taking oh, his clothes off. Speaking I don't of which, him. We're, did you see the follow up to the lady that breastfed her daughter at the graduation? I saw the pictures of her and how she talked about how it wasn't supposed to be that serious and all that kind of stuff. Is that what you're alluding that, to? That she said that she was proud that she had had her child while she was in school, so she wanted to celebrate with her. I'm still unmoved okay. by that. I, I, I still think. Well, like I said, she has some big guns. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I'm not going okay, to I, I, No, no. I'm bless, sexist. I'm glad you brought that up because, you know. I saw where she apparently didn't think that her doing that would turn into this media storm that it did. And I just think that she, I think there's a level of disingenuineness there, you know? And, and, and I mean, if you disagree, I mean, no, no, we no, got I time just... to kind of talk about this follow-up if you want to, because I'm glad you brought that up because when I saw the follow-up photographs, you know, and I took a, I took a hammer in the social media behind this because people thought that I was a little bit too aggressive. Mm -hmm. Fair enough, you feel that way. But at the end of the day, you know, if it's all about you feeding your child and all of that kind of stuff, you don't smile at your graduation with, with a big smile on your face and you know posing for a photograph to breastfeed. To me, mm -hmm. that's you being an exhibitionist, not a good mother. Mm -hmm. Well, in both of these cases, it's just a sign of the times that younger people just don't have any type of filter they don't have any type of common sense when it comes to decency and how you should hold mm -hmm. yourself in public mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay but hold on she's breastfeeding her child so what she, she's supposed to duck and cover to breastfeed nobody's the child? suggesting that but there is a discreet way mm -hmm. that you do anything in public and anytime hold on you, I Huh? I'm, I'm, I'm just saying he was showing um, being, discreet, being discreet but it was not oh, okay. it wasn't yeah I didn't get it but yeah. I mean you, you, <laughs> you, you, you're not going to pull your breast out and smile for a picture at a graduation and expect people to not have Some a sort of feeling, about feeling about that you just you just you just not and for those folks who want to support her and talk about how great a mom she is hey cool you're entitled to your opinion I thought the picture was in poor taste. She may be a great mom, but she did she, a I'm dumb, sure she is she a great mom. Move. Because for me, if you're breastfeeding, move. you're already ahead of the game because you're breastfeeding. And to me, that's something that's important. That's important to bond with your child. That's important to give your child all of the vitamins and everything that you're mm -hmm. giving directly from you. It ain't coming from a cow. It ain't coming from a you know a chemical plant a plant sorting, all of that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. It's coming directly from you. So all of those things are great things. Where you lose me is the exhibition of this. I'm a woman. It's not against the law. You can't tell me I can't do it, so I'm going to do it. Pow, in your face. It's that attitude that I had a problem with because it's that attitude that I see in her face and it's that attitude that I see and I hear in the people that are supporting her. Mm -hmm. and that's, what, that, that's the problem I had with it. The follow-up bless that I saw from her tells me that this is a good woman. This is a good young woman who followed up you know, did everything she needed to do to graduate through school. She talked about how having this child motivated her. All of those great things. I don't have no issue with none of that. None of it. None, none of that. I, you know, if by all accounts, you know, I agree that she's a good woman. I just think that you were a dummy for taking this picture and posting it on social media and being shocked at people thinking that you're a crazy okay. person for doing it. That's it. That's it. I, if you want to give me heat for it, then call me and tell me to you know on the air eight zero four four zero two two eight nine three is the number to dial. Call Banks. Yeah. Did you see this funeral in New Orleans where these daughters, because they love their mom so much, and their mom was such a free spirited woman that they memorialized her 
with a, quote, last party, complete with a can of bush beer, menthol cigarettes, and a disco ball. They didn't put her in a casket, no. They had her sitting at a kitchen table, holding a cigarette in one hand, holding a beer in another hand, and basically in a party type of atmosphere. And this photograph has made its way around the internet and i'm showing the crew right now everybody everybody is seeing it and bless it as she snatches <laughs> she the gummy bears the gummy back bear. she saves the gummy bears <laughs> but, uh, gummy bear. Them gummy bears she's a 50, 53 year old woman you see the photograph and you know all of us have been to funerals and i think we've grown accustomed to seeing what a deceased body looks like in a casket but when you see a deceased body sitting up at a kitchen table with the shades with the, on, with the shades, shades and, and, and the Beyonce wig, it's a little bit disturbing. No, no it, it, it's not as disturbing as this show that I saw um, about this extreme, funeral home. Extreme, yeah, funerals Out of Florida. Something. Extreme what? funeral. It's yeah, something I mean, it's to out that Texas, effect. It's out of Texas, I think it was. Yeah, it's something. It, this, to ain't, this ain't nothing. This ain't nothing. This ain't nothing. Extreme funeral. They, wanted they to put had a guy, dude. a griller. Was he a griller or something? A I, barbecuer? I don't remember all the all the tactics. I just remember they wanted to put this one dude on a roller coaster because he was too short to ride it. Right. So they will cremate old boy. Granted, she ain't cremated. She got her physical body there. But they wanted to cremate dude. And put him on a roller coaster so that he could say, he's or they could say, he's officially written it. I mean, they had, had this show was off the chain, stupid. Okay, that's how bad it was. So this right here, this is not, this is nothing. Because that the things that were talking place on that show, yeah, they taught the cake on that. The Michelle, name Mich- of it was Extreme Funerals okay. on TLC. Is the the TV show? Michelle K says she saw the show and the funeral home is located in California. California. Okay, I knew it was. Further west in here. Yeah. I mean, it. I've done a funeral where, videotape wise, um, they changed the dude's suit prior to burying him. So they funeralized him in one suit, had to disrobe him, and put on another suit. This is the one I was talking. Oh yeah, about. yeah, yeah. So, so basically, what we're saying is. The it's becoming that, more. So the fact that we see in this, because we know we also know that New Orleans is known for being somewhat flamboyant with a lot of the things that they do down there. I mean, I saw a video of a uh, I saw a video of a couple of pallbearers who were holding the casket over their heads and they were literally doing a dance complete with twisting and turning and all of that kind of stuff in in sequence. So the fact that Miss Miriam Mary May May Burbank, who passed away on June first, uh, is sitting up chilling at the kitchen table at her funeral, there ain't nothing to that. I, well, I, I'm, I, I'm tripping by thinking, what the hell? No, in New Orleans, usually they have like a party. That they're partying down the street as they're carrying the casket to be, mm-hmm. you know, the person to be buried. I know my uncle wants to be buried that way. He wants it to be a celebration of life. Don't be sad. No crying. We're all going to parade down the street. But this one was what I was talking about. There's uh, the pallbearers have on chefs' hats and aprons as they're carrying the man in a barbecue smoker. It looks like to his funeral. That's right. That's what's up. Okay. See this stuff right here is real creepy. Really, really creepy. That woman sitting there with a beer and a cigarette. When I, I seen that picture, I immediately changed my page. I didn't want to look at it. Don't. Mm-mm. The first one that That's I saw was where they set a dude up on his motorcycle. No. That's the first one that I had seen. He was a rider. I, so. I, I, I never in my life heard of this TV show. Although, when you tell me, like Colin Banks told me last sun, last summer that you can have a show about naked and afraid, and I, and, 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 I, and I see you know you know you know rednecks running around selling duck calling th- things, and and and, and then I it's see shows show. with dudes jumping the water and they play with alligators. There is nothing that you can put on television that would ever surprise me. But, and I hope you're not offended by the word redneck. We'll say the N word later on to balance it out. No, um, we won't. <laughs> you know, unless but, it slips from yeah, me. Unless it slips from Bless because she's it. the only one that says it. But, but, <laughs> but in all seriousness, like, I, I just don't. I, don't I, I guess you can do whatever you want to yeah. do as the family. And you, you talk about a funeral as 
a celebration anyway. I, I, I can't party with. I'm gonna be afraid that she's gonna get up and walk over she to get me. Up and walk, hold <laughs> Thank you. She get up and walk. <laughs> Thank you. Expect to see me How on your body, right? <laughs> what y'all doing? Leaving you at the at the funeral, okay? Because I'm gonna be gone. All right, your bike and me are gone. See, I, she gonna I, be I, asking somebody what to bring her sick ass. Somebody gonna hear her. I mean, home. we've all heard stories about those people who go into the cremation chamber and they wake up in there right before that flame hit. And that's ass. Louisiana, that voodoo type stuff. Mm-mm, see, I don't play with see, you. I just wanted to somebody. Fart, what right? y'all scared of? What y'all scared of? I see. I'm not scared of it. I'm not scared of death, but the whole type of Ooh. yeah. All of it, you don't do the Walking Dead. That's no, it. and so they they fart and all of that thing. when they're. Mm-mm. Yeah. <laughs> that's probably the stinkiest fart too. I know, bro. Because your stomach it's ain't like a moved. formaldehyde fart. <laughs> <laughs> Your stomach ain't moved about four days. Y'all, this is terrible, y'all. This is just terrible. I'm sorry. <laughs> this Michelle K said it was about, crazy. She talked about a terrible, but she could talk about fecal matter earlier. Michelle, right? Michelle K said it was crazy. It was a breakfast funeral episode and one for the Olympic track star whose family wanted him to make a final run around the track. Yeah. Wow. That's See? that's crazy. This hey, look, nothing. for me, I'm just, I've already told people who are close to me so they know, you know, just go ahead and fry a brother up, put me in an urn. And when possible, disperse me. I'm not sharing publicly where I'd like to be dispersed. So people close to Yankee me know Stadium. where that is. Yankee Stadium. You know, the people, people close to me knows where that needs to be. But, you know, I, I don't need no funeral and all that kind of stuff. No it's, you think you know me, but you don't. You know, but, but, but cool, fair enough. Uh, I, I just... People get so weird about it. Y'all, I'm telling y'all, I'm scared. I'm not coming back Monday. What they, you scared what? of? They freaking me out up in here. Girl, um, please stop being a punk. Yeah, be you a just punk. be quiet. I'm not being, to you. Why is she being a punk over there? I'm not talking to you. All right, well, don't talk to me then. I'll talk to it's, them. It's just, I, again, I a respect type thing. Okay. I, and to have someone lay out peacefully in the casket is what I'm used to. Okay. Another freaking baby picture? How many do you have? Oh, look, a class picture. Mm-hmm. You know, I, feel the love. Do you feel I do. The love? I feel the love. Nah, because hey, she's always making faces at me. I'm not making faces at you. I don't like her. So what? Ain't no half stepping with Marcus J. All right, listen. Call Max. Yeah. God, I hate him. <laughs> no, you don't. She love me. <laughs> Call Max. Uh, this one kind of tripped me out. I ain't gonna lie, because it's about the Lieberman couple. Lieberman. The, the Liebermans, yes, the Liebermans, the Liebermans. Uh, the Liebermans recently had twin babies, and you know it was great. You know, anytime you have a baby, it's supposed to be a good time, unless you didn't want the baby to be coming. You know, but usually when you oh, have dear. baby, and then there's twins, like wow, you know. And then you usually name the twins, you know, something cool like Sarah and Mara and Tori and Corey and Sarah. Jim and Tim and. Mm-hmm. You know, stuff like that. Yeah. Well, the Liebermans, they named their twins Ghostface and Raekwon. That's right. I'm sorry. Clan ain't One nothing more time. Like, the Liebermans yes. la- named their twin sons Ghostface and Raekwon. The chef. You no, because it ain't no killer and it ain't no chef. <laughs> <laughs> But all, all, all jokes aside, like seriously, they're, I'm with it. you know, you know, and and this story was made public because the couple who are obviously, if you uh, been living under a rock for the last twenty <laughs> years, you know that two of the more prominent members of the Wu Tang Clan are two gentlemen. One is known as Raekwon the Chef and Ghostface Killer. Apparently, the Liebermans are fans of Wu Tang Clan, and when they name their twin sons Ghostface and Raekwon, they tweeted at the real Raekwon the chef, who is the one who made this public. And I'm getting this article from XXLMag.com. Yeah. And so Sweet. it's a true story. It has been validated. This ain't no hoax. It ain't from The Onion or none of them other crazy websites. These two little Jewish boys are named Ghostface <laughs> and Raekwon. I'm with it. I cannot wait to hear their name announced at the bar. <laughs> I mean, Raekwon is bad enough. I, I I got a cousin. I got a I got a cousin who named her son Raekwon. And Raekwon, when you hear that, is not any different than some Ray of John. the than some of the more you know ethnically black names that and we've heard the over the last twenty years. But you named your son Ghost Face, like Ghost Face, like really Ghost yeah. Face? Why not? 
I mean, seriously, I like it. Maybe I'm all for it. Maybe he was because pale. first of all, let's think about it. Maybe he came out pale. You name your kid. <laughs> uh, people, I wanted to name my son Emmett, but she wouldn't let me. Emmett is not Ghostface called. Let's but we're that's not just do it. That. Hold on, let me finish my point, sir. Let me finish my point. Okay. See, you always cut somebody just get, off. Get to the point. No, I'm then. trying to get to the point. We'll get to it then. You looked up to somebody. Somebody you looked up to. Somebody you that was influential. You wanted to name them after something or someone. If, if that, that inspired you. If that so, was so serious for them to do, they, then they find, didn't out, go you, find with, out their real names. You kill me with your devil's advocate sometimes because even you know how ghost dumb it is to name your killer. child Ghostface. I mean, I've heard worse. Ghostface ghost Lieberman? Lieberwitz? Lieberman? Lieberman? Ghostface <laughs> Lieberman. Ghostface Lieberman? Here. I'll tell you some names. <laughs> Present. I'll you, okay. I'll tell you some names. Uh, uh, some names that I know on the break. I ain't gonna Marijuana. call them out. Yeah, see, there you I go. There you go. I mean, for real. Oh, I, know I know a girl. Her Marijuana. name is Denise. I mean, Spell D- Denise. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Denise. We we talked about how no, this is not Denise. We talked about how there was a chick named Ladasha, mm-hmm. and the dash, the hyphen is silent. I mean, all of that is crazy, and all of that. But, but you very rarely hear Lieberman's. Ghost it's not even. It's not even that. Like the fact that it's a Jewish couple, and you can't assume they're black or white. You just know that they, you just pretty much know. know that they're Jewish. You don't know if they're black or white. You just Lieberman. You can assume that they're Jewish. That's about it. But ghost face. Nothing to f with. <laughs> his face is middle name. <laughs> no, his first name is Ghost Face. But like on the birth certificate, it says it's Ghost, Ghost Face. Face Lieberman. Ghost Face Lieberman is what it says. And the middle name is is blank. There is a photograph here of the birth certificate. You can see it. It's right there. Ghost Face Lieberman. This is the and this, those are the babies right there. There's little Raekwon's birth certificate, and there's little Ghost Face. Well, you know, Raekwon Lieberman. That's not so bad, but Ghost Face. Lieberman. So when he gets older, you know Ghostface ain't someone to well. Mm-mm. Yeah. No, Ghostface is gonna get it when he goes to school. Ghostface Lieberman. Just call me GFL. <laughs> <laughs> GF Lieberman. <laughs> Boy, get it now. Let me get your shirt. Wu-Tang Clan. Are they gonna have seven more? <laughs> nine more? How many were in Wu Tang Clan? I mean, okay. if they have nine children, you're gonna be looking for little meth, little method man. You're going to be looking for little Inspector Deck, mm-hmm. little You God. <laughs> what about the old dirty bastard? <laughs> I mean, you're going to name your child old dirty bastard? Oh, sweet oh. baby Jesus. Yeah, that, that's the best. How about old Cyrus? Yes. Oh, my God. Can you dig it? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> killing me. You're killing me. You're killing me. Ain't no ass to have Mario. I really needed more people to, be, to have a strong reaction to Ghostface than I did. Uh, Mr. L.P. Steven Sykes says, parents, well, I'm not going to agree with this. <laughs> <laughs> he said the parents should go to jail. <laughs> he also said you can really claim child endangerment on this. Really, really not cool, regardless of the cultural background. Just wrong. Not really prepared to go that far. Michelle K. is saying parents are wrong for that. I know someone who has two nephews named Safari and Knowledge. Safari and Knowledge, That's I have okay. absolutely no problem with Safari and, or Knowledge. Uh, I think Knowledge is a great name to give a child. Uh, Safari sounds pretty. I don't. I don't have no issues with those two names. What happened to normal names? We who determines Blue what's Ivy. normal? Mm-hmm. Who, who who determines what's normal? Blue Royal Ivy Rain. is weird. Royal Rain. I have no problem with Royal Rain. I know you know. And, and Mr. LP and I debated that last week. Um, Apple. You know, you name your kid after a fruit. Kingston Marley. You know, I, I'll be honest with you. I am pretty liberal when it comes to names. I also know that mainstream is not. So I do need to kind of Ghost pull it back sometimes with some of the, uh, I guess, the agree- agreements that I have with some of the names. But you can say what you want about loving Wu-Tang Clan. Just forget about Wu-Tang Clan for a second. Just forget about that for a second and think about the name Ghost Face. When he goes for a job, just like we tell our people, when they're going for a job, think of how they're going to be stereotype right now. I, I can only pray that when he gets older he's gonna he change his, his name. name. Ghost face? Yes. Hey GF. I mean, that's just terrible. GF. I, I don't agree with Mr. LP that they should go to jail. I don't think you know putting the parents in jail, what is that gonna do? Yeah, I, I don't, who's I don't, gonna get I, the, take care of the kids. And, I, I don't mean, think that just, you can get child endangerment, all that stuff for naming a kid, but I, I understand the spirit of where he's coming from. 
because the names are, are going to get ridiculed. The names are ridiculous, and the parents had to know that you were setting your kids up to have a very difficult childhood. So I, I, I understand. They like Maybe they're relatives they of the care. Beastie Boys. Yeah, but I mean, you want to name your kid no, MCA? I'm just saying, I got to find a reason for Or Ad Rock. Maybe they're friends with Red Man and Method Man, and they just don't care. Yeah, but that's Reggie and Clifford. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and that would be better than Ghostface. <laughs> Ghostface. And you know, I asked that with Marcus. Yeah, all right, the last thing I want to get into in I'm this sorry. segment before we take uh, a break is uh, an article that I'm getting as why from the Huffington Post. This one darling. is about when I, when I finish saying it, then you can say this <laughs> one is about. So you were getting that from the Huffington Post. Go. I'm sorry. <laughs> he started it. He brought he it did. on himself. <laughs> Your punks. Anyway, see, I'm getting this one. See, see, see. Getting this one from the Huffington Post. This one is about an Iowa teacher who reportedly made a black teen refer to him as master. I'm sorry, what? Master. Is he married? How old is he? Well, I'm going to get into the article, and hopefully some of your information, some of your questions will come out. We'll flesh it out. This mother, of course, wants to know how this teacher is going to be disciplined. Uh, Mother Nicole uh, Nicole White said that Des Moines uh, Public School District, Des Moines, Iowa, confirmed the incident occurred, but she said the district will not disclose how the educator was penalized. Roosevelt High School principal Joseph Blazevich reportedly wrote to the mother to tell her what happened was terrible and shameful. The offending teacher also called her to apologize. I have tried to be humble, White said, who plans on reaching out to the Iowa Civil Rights Commission and the NAACP. Wow, okay, big whip on that. Uh, and she, <laughs> but I also feel the need to express as a mother and as a black woman how I feel. Black students are a minority at Roosevelt High School, while the majority of the students are white. The school's district website says that black kids make up 17.5% of the overall district. Minorities make up 55% uh, overall. However, a vast majority of the district teachers are white, and only 6% of the district's educators are white. Now, before I pass this on to y'all, I don't think that any of that matters. You can give me all the statistics you want. I don't think it matters what the demographics are. Everybody knows history, and everybody knows what's offensive and what's not offensive. If you are a teacher, a white teacher, and you refer to a black kid and tell that black kid, you need to call me master, I think everybody around hears that and knows what's going on here. I'll have more to say about this at the end of the segment here, but I want you guys to to kind of jump in. Bless you first. I was going to play devil's advocate, but I'm pretty sure he's old enough not to be a master, but be a mister now, because masters are what young men are called, right? Pretty, and, pretty much. Okay. So I guess he's old enough to know better regarding that. And yes, the statistics don't really mean much. They're in Iowa. That's supposed to be a northern p- place where racism is covered up more <laughs> in the north but um what can we say i mean what was the what was the surrounding what happened to piss him off so much that he said you call me master apparently Were they reenacting apparently the then this article doesn't allude to it but i know a little bit about the story and basically the kids were leaving out of the classroom they were doing a project they were leaving out of the classroom and he referred to the student, and the, and the student was calling him. He said to him, yes, sir. He, he gave him a directive, and the student said, yes, sir. Um, and his response was, you don't call me, sir. You call me master, or something to that effect. Maybe he didn't mean it that way. Maybe he meant, like, kung fu or something. You know what? I don't know. Maybe. Re- really? Maybe. Really? He said, yes, sir. I can't see where someone would get mad with. Well, I mean, people get mad now that I call them sir and ma'am, so I don't know. Yeah, I, so you want to replace know. sir with master? Yes, master. Or how would Daniel son and all? Yes, yeah, sensei. It's okay. One thing <laughs> when, if, it, if it had come directly from the young kid, yeah. But if you say, don't call me sir, call me master, it's a little yeah. bit different. And again, I think we all know history. Like Mama J is a black belt in Taekwondo. Okay. And two white men in her school are masters. We refer to them as master because of the rank they have attained in Taekwondo. School to me, me to, to, to me, yep. that would be different. That's different. Because that is a cultural thing that comes from the school that they're in, the organization that they're in, the martial art that they're in. That's different. If we got a white dude in a high school that tells a black kid, don't call me sir, call me master, I think we all know what's going on here. Uh, 
Yeah. I, I don't know. That's why. My attempt failed. Yeah, I saw you bless trying to play <laughs> devil's advocate. That I'm not sure I want to take that ride with you. <laughs> that wouldn't be me. That wouldn't be me. They would have called the cops because every freaking word I could think of other than that one would have come out of my mouth, and I might have tried to assault the teacher. They would be calling my parents, well, my mama, calling my mama up there, and my mama would have said, just like she said, anytime anybody said something to me and I got at them, well, what did you do to her? What did you say to her? Well, apparently this kid had behavioral issues in the past that he has just gotten a hold of. Mm -hmm. So had this incident taken place a year earlier, they probably we, wouldn't we, have we might have had a mom. different mm -hmm. situation. We, instead of us hearing about how the kid reported it, mm -hmm. we would have never heard about it because the kid would have punched the teacher in the face. Mm -hmm. It would have been another black kid who assaulted the teacher, and we would have never heard the front part. Mm -hmm. But this kid apparently had behavioral issues that he's no longer suffering from. Right. And so instead of reacting with violence, which is never the right thing, mm -hmm. just like with football, call, and I know you can relate to this, if, you know you do something to me and I retaliate, I'm the one that's going to get the 15-yard flag. So what's your, what's your thoughts on this? You want, I want to hear the whole conversation. I mean, I hate hearing certain situations. I hate hearing of situations like this without hearing everything. Yep. I wasn't there. Unfortunately, I wasn't there. Who else was there? You know, in today's technological age, somebody recorded it. I mean, where is it? Um, I think I that hate, might have happened I really, I just hate hearing situations like this where I'm not so much forced to pick a side where something is said and you don't know all the facts and this and that. I just want to know everything to make a clear decision. Like Marcus said earlier, depending on where you are, he should have been addressed as Mr. Master. But again, that if that was at the setting, I don't know. So Not in school, he's not. Not in school. Well, let me ask you this, Carlton. Yeah. Uh, I know that you like to play the devil's advocate, and I respect the fact that you want all of the information, but do you think that there's ever an appropriate time for a white male teacher to say to a black male student, call me master instead of sir? I mean, is that a situation that you need all of the facts if you're giving those? Uh, if I'm giving you just those skeleton facts, that's all you get. That's all you get. Those two skeleton facts. Do you think that it's appropriate for me to say, call me master, call me, call me master, not sir? White male teacher, black male student with a knowledge of history as the backdrop. You think that's okay in I, any I need way? The, I need the full context. Why do you need full context? Because you, you, you said it earlier, Marcus, that because. If, if if Mama J is in a karate school and the the guy is the master of that dojo, you address him as master. I mean, th I don't know. I mean, seriously, there's certain scenarios where Real. I'm an apprentice. If if I if I if if I'm a plumber, I don't start off, start off as a master plumber. I'm an apprentice. Maybe the guy just wants to feel that level of respect. I don't know. I need the, the context of it needs to be fully defined. I can I can dig it. I just disagree. Mr. LP says take the license from the teacher. Say it said that school board refuses to announce the punishment is wrong. The fact that people can still commit blatant racism, which is illegal, and the person does not go to jail should never be allowed to work with students again. I, I got a problem when we always want to play devil's advocate when someone does something to us, but when you know the roles are reversed, you know we're quick to want to come down on our own. I'll give you an example. You know, when it's black on black crime, you know, everybody wants to kind of roll their eyes and say, oh, well, Pookie's killing Pookie again. But when it's white on black crime, we want to march and we want to call about Sharpton and we want to do all of this kind of crazy stuff. Like when it's someone doing something crazy, no matter who it is, we should have the same kind of venom. And I respect the fact that you want the full story. I do. I do. Trust me, I do. But. For me, you tell me that a white male teacher in a school, in a regular high school, we're not talking about the, the apprentice, you know, master type, but this ain't Star Wars. We're not talking about Taekwondo here. We're talking about a regular high school teacher telling a black kid in school, call me master. Not cool with that. 
I'm, I'm, I'm just not cool with that. Ain't no half step on Marcus J. Right. We're going to take another break. And when we come back, we're going to ask a couple of hot button questions. And I'm hoping that we get some energy from the room on this one. We're going to ask a question on consensual sex. Yeah. And I also want to know about women and Father's Day. That's why. Miss Bless, Calm Banks, and yours truly. Ain't no half step on Marcus J. Be back in a few minutes.